Welcome back, Hogaholics. Um, hopefully this is not going to be a long video, but stick with it till the end because there's some vital information and some very important, uh, uh, you know, safety information at the end. So. I did two things recently. Uh, I hit up a, a expo. Uh, I mentioned that on, on social media. Uh, I went to the world's largest outdoor uh, show, the Great American Outdoor Show. Travels the country. They had it recently in Pennsylvania, just across the, the way. And uh, I actually got stuck working on Saturday. But after done work, uh, we jetted straight down to Penzi and uh, hit up the expo. Had a limited amount of time last like three hours before they shut the show by the time we got there but uh i did get a chance to to go in and see some of the features there um it was really nice it's you know it's fishing and uh, hunting and outdoor life all, all around um it had a lot of different presenters uh on the 8th and 9th well the 9th uh they had both roland martin and um jimmy houston uh were there as uh, presenters and they also had uh you know, just rolling on the 8th, he was there on the 9th, Jimmy was on the 9th and, and, and on the 10th, I believe. Um, but I did catch a, another, you know, YouTuber, one who I've talked about in the past, um, <laughs> a man by the name of Travis Manson. Uh, you might better know him as a Small Mouth Crush. Uh, you know, he's not exactly my most favorite YouTuber. Uh, I, I've definitely said some things, you know, in, in post. But uh, I did get a chance to, to catch up with him for a short little bit of time. He was on the phone, so I didn't want to bother him too much. Uh, but he was there. He was promoting his guide service. He does guide work in, uh, you know, northern New York uh, on different lakes around here. Uh, so that was kind of cool. But uh, getting with it, I, while I was there, was looking for really three main things. I was looking for, first and foremost, a rod for my, um, for my Shimano Corrado DC. Uh, I think... Uh, that failed miserably. It was the second to last day of the expo. So it was slim pickings, uh, certainly. Uh, I was looking for a PDF, which I needed uh, to upgrade. And I was looking for a bait knocker. Um, didn't get any of those at, um, at the trade show. So that kind of stunk. But I did get a few things that were, you know, nice. And I did come across something uh, that was one of a kind, at least in my opinion. So real quick. Um, while I was there, there was a small booth, a uh, bunch of tables around with, with bins, and there was a couple of things in there. Um, I got these little Magnum Bass Stopper, two hook weedless. They remind me of the cream worms. You know, they got two little hooks on there. Little, it's actually got a weed guarded hook, so it's a weedless presentation. Um, I got it in a chartreuse, bed season's coming up. I got it in a black, great for your, you know, your stained water. Um, so I got that, made in Dominican Republic. Mm. Um, pretty cool. Like again, it's a two. It's a weedless hook. It's two hooks on a soft plastic worm. I got a couple little um, from Lost Loot. Um, I'm just showing you a few of the things. I mean, I got more than, but uh, here's three different colors. I got again that yellow chartreuse, like little grubs, almost like like little magnet maggot baits, similar to your trout magnets uh, and all. This one had an underspin in black, and I, of course, got it in, in white. Uh, I like the whites, the green pumpkins, a little chartreuse when the muddy, when you know, the water's stained, um, and white, of course, when it's clear. So I got those. Um, I personally love uh, occasionally to get spoons, especially when they are a unique color tone of a spoon. From Red Eye, I got what they call their Rattle Zapper. Uh, these are made in America. Normally $2 each. All these things were really, really inexpensive overall. There were a lot of things in there. I went to one booth, and the guy was trying to, to hock me on, um, while I was looking for, for a, a, a rod, he was trying to hock me on a very chintzy lose uh, reel. Um, you know, he was spouting a bunch of stuff, how it's dipped three times, once in uh, chrome, once in, like, a copper, once in titanium, I don't know. But he was just, you know, sp spilling the beans a little bit too heavy for me. 
Uh, but I got these spoons here. These are pretty nice. They're a little flutter spoon. Again, they have a weedless, a weed guarded hook on the back. But what was really cool is I saw this color and it just, uh, it just caught me. So I figured I had to get it because not just the crackle green paint with the little hints of chartreuse gives you kind of like that frog, turtle, tortoise shell. Again, they're, they got a weed, a weed guard on the hook, but on the inside of the spoon, it's actually copper tone, which is unique. Most of the time it's nickel plate chrome. Um, this has got a nice copper. Uh, they're from Daredevil. So I'm interested to see how this is going to work for me. Um, really, I just, I like the design. Very, very, you know, different to me. Um, so I'm interested on that. Uh, while I was there, I got some novelty things just because, well, I got tricked into it by my buddy who I work with who, you know, tagged along with me down there. Uh, so Quinn saw these and uh, I had to get them. I got a little Miller High Life float and another bobber. This one is Lickenfeller, Licken, whatever that is. I forget that brand. I don't drink this beer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Miller guy once in a while, but most of the time it's uh, Corona's. <laughs> Just saying. I'm more of a hard liquor guy. Absolute 100, uh, Patron, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. 151, it's kind of me. But the thing that I got the most of, which I thought was unique, was this Louisiana Soft Plastics Bait Company. So this guy in Louisiana, excuse me, I dropped one package. This guy in Louisiana makes these baits. I found them kind of unique. They were just loosely out there, and you grabbed a little bag, and it was, uh, what was it? I think it was twenty for for five dollars, uh, at or or maybe it was, yeah, I think it was ten for five, twenty for ten. I think it was twenty for ten dollars. Um, so I got a bunch. I just figured, what the heck not? So he's got he had uh like four different styles there. I got three of the different styles. He had these soft plastic worms. What's unique about them, what got me, is, okay, so they're, they're round balls on one side. On the other side, as you see as I rotate it slowly, they're kind of almost like the feet on an inch on inchworm or, or what have you. They're just tiny little nibs. And then it's got a paddle tail. It's not quite a split tail like you'd see on like a zoom or whatever, but you could certainly come in here with a pair of scissors and cut a little V in there and get that to curl uh, rather than have just a flat paddle. But I saw those, I got them in a couple of colors, uh, blue, a more natural green pumpkin tone uh, with, I got this one, which is green pumpkin with a blue hue, which I think is just cool. Um, so I did that. And I got the other body format that I did pick up. Let's see if I can find the package in here which again was kind of unique. He had some lizards. Now, I'm not a big fan of lizards, but these are interesting because they cue into the other uh, body form that he actually has. So, he's got these. There's little feet, wide profile body, standard little worm, tail, very soft plastic, little lizard head, obviously. Again, the only time that I think of lizards for me personally, because I don't fish Florida or Texas or any of those kinds of places, Tennessee, um, I think I think bed fishing. I think when the when the bass are on their beds, lizards kind of just emulate that natural animal analog that they are going to want to get rid of, um, get it off their bed as fast as possible. But the thing that caught my eye before even noticing the lizard baits were these. He calls them, I believe, the cobra something or other. But as you see, it's got this design just like a king cobra. So it's got this flared ribs. And if you know anything, I love the chase baits uh, because they have those, those squid uh, sort of fluttering body profiles uh, that had a lot of action. This is a much more stiff plastic. In the, uh, I got the black red flake with the chartreuse tail. I've got sort of a curly kind of blue-green with silver flake. And this color right here, again, just gives you a different, different colorway. Uh, I got 
They had some glow-in-the-dark ones. I thought I'd pick a pack of, of glow-in-the-dark, but I guess I didn't grab any. Um, but that's okay. I got a natural color, both in the... I got it both in the worm itself with the cobra head as well as in the uh, lizard. Get a worm out here. So here's the cobra worm. And here's the lizard. Same, same color, just basically uh, a light, pale green pumpkin, black flake. Chartreuse tail. Uh, I got watermelon red flake with a red tail, which I think are going to be killer. So, watermelon, red flake, and it has a red teaser tail on the end, which I think is just cool. I guess you could wacky rig it, but I think with the this being so bulky, I don't think that would be the best of ideas. So I think these are mostly going to be Texas rigged and just slow dragged on the bottom. Then I got them in a red with white tail, which is one of my favorite colors, believe it or not. Josh, that fish in the mitten knows. <laughs> red and white tails, or white and red tails are kind of my, my go-to. I just love this color scheme and pattern. Um, I don't know, something antique about it. Maybe that's it. Uh, and then of course, I got it in a raspberry red with black flake. That's obviously spring coming. Red tones, definitely going to catch. Uh, so I got those. That's pretty much the haul I got from the... Oh, I did also get a few uh, from the same supplier that had uh, the bobbers and the spoons. I got a few more reel covers uh, for my spinning rods and for my casting rods. In some colorways that are different than the standard black, uh, gray and white that I have, and green, you know, most of mine are solid colors, but I like to use my rod sleeves as a way to delineate uh, both matches, like I have a spinning and a casting rod that go together, so I'll use those in the same color rod sleeve, and then, of course, if I have a specific uh, rod for a specific technique, be it my uh, jerk bait rod or my, uh, my, my heavier gauge rod for punching and flipping, I use a color-coordinated rod sleeve for that, so I know looking down or looking on my rack, which are what. Um, it's just easier. I mean, a lot of people also do the, they change their grips on their on their reels, but I tend to buy the combo and keep the combo. I'm not one of those people that takes the, the reel off of a rod and then swips it, swaps it to another rod. Um, I kind of just leave it the way it is. Once I've decided how I want to dial it in, that's pretty much what I go with, and then I'll just keep that set up for antiquity. Um, moving on from there, again, I was toward the end, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff left with the last two days, and maybe in the end of the night of the, la of the day before they ended, um, but we left there and went to the Cabela's. Now, I'm not a big traveler to all of these Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's and, and Gander Mountains and stuff like that. So this was the first time I actually had been into a Cabela's, and I was pretty impressed. They have quite a large selection. This was a larger Cabela's. Um, and while I was there, I got some things that I have been desperately looking for, things that I was looking for at the expo, hoping to get a, a good deal. Um, that said, I still didn't get the rod, so I'm just going to order that online and have that mailed to me. But the things that I did want, and I did get. So I wanted a lower knocker. So I got this guy here, pretty darn good, and what I like about this one is it comes with the, the chains on the front. So if I have a treble hook bait, I can throw this down there if it gets caught in a tree limb, and if it doesn't knock the bait out, just you know, simply doing the, the technique of you tension your line, you let this slide down, hit the bait, jostle it free, and then you lift your rod and just give it that constant pendulum action, these will uh, hopefully snag on one of the treble hooks and then bend out the the bait so it can pull it out um, sturdy line I will put heat shrink on here I always do this put heat shrink back over the line and I heat shrink this connection here because this section of the line gets the most pulling tension it's inside the thick of it I want to protect this rope here so it doesn't fray snap off and then leave not just my lure but also my lure not lure knocker behind 
Um, I got a few soft plastic baits. I got some uh, Bass Pro Shops brand Helgermites. So I have Helgermites uh, in black and blue. These here are in Houdini, which is basically like a green pumpkin, white pearl outside, black and red flake. Pretty cool. I got some more gobies. I love gobies for, um, you know, for small mouth, large mouth. Um, definitely get bit. Uh, these are in watermelon seed, so watermelon and black flake, basically. Um, pretty cool. I picked up, oh, I did have another Bass Pro Shop Helgramite in the black blue uh, flake. So there's that. I picked up um, some dark sleepers, of course, Mega Bass, dark sleeper. Uh, if you, I mean, everybody knows what these are. These are the smaller version. These aren't the full size uh, dark sleepers. These are the smaller dark sleepers. Uh, I got it both in the Donko, uh, or Danico, excuse me, and the Hanahazi. Hanahazi, which to me, the Hanahazi gives you a good, like, bluegill presentation. And then this one is just dark for, you know, gives you that kind of goby, dark, blackish kind of color, depending on your water clarity. I picked up a new reel grease. Like I said, I was going to tinker around with that 13 Fishins, um, not Project X, Prototype X uh, spinning reel that I got for my drop shot rig. So I tore that apart. Uh, they always tend to over grease the reels at the manufacturer. I tore it apart. I take a Q-tip. I clean all their factory grease off as best I can. And then I go in and I put just a little dab where it needs to be. Because as much as grease reduces friction and helps lubricate, too much of it and its viscosity will actually hinder the movement of drag and, and reel movement and things like that. So I like to actually know just that I put just enough and not too much. That's just me. I'm a bit particular. So I got some Bass Pro Shops real grease because I keep my expensive reel grease for my expensive rods. That wasn't expensive, excuse me, expensive reels. That wasn't an expensive reel, so I figured, you know, what the heck, get a pack while I'm there. Uh, I picked up from Terminator some of their replacement skirts, both in an orange with chartreuse and an all-white. Great if you have just a jig and doesn't have a skirt and you want to put one on there. Uh, you can do that, and you can do that to match your trailer or uh, coordinate with your trailer. Um... More important, I've been looking all over, and I was just too lazy to order it online, but I have the Dip and Glow's Garlic uh, Chartreuse, and for the longest time, I wanted the blue. I couldn't find the blue. I ran out of the red, and I couldn't find the blue. But at Cabela's, I re-upped with the red in garlic, or orange, I should say, and the blue. So now I have the Chartreuse, the orange, and the blue. If I have a white bait, I can give it a blue hit. If I have a yellow bait, I can give it an orange hit. If I have a, a, a clear bait, I can give it a chartreuse hit. Um, all great, especially because if you like and you're skilled enough, you can actually draw on your soft plastics with this. Adding, you know, orange on the gill slit kind of mimics the red a little bit. Uh, blue dots for lateral line, blue, uh, you know, any kind of thing you want to do, you can, you can add a little punch of color and scent to your baits. I also, while I was there, got this Danielson's Hypocrite Spoon. And there's a reason why I picked this up. Right now, one of the greatest things you can do, both cold water coming into spring and during the transition when they start uh, schooling up fish and they also muddy, muddy water as ice melts, snow melts, when the rains come in April... Uh, April showers bring May flowers, and your, your lakes and rivers start flooding in with muddy water. If you don't know, running a spinnerbait in muddy water is great. It gives you vibration. If you have a nice trailer, it gives you a little hit in the dark, murky water. They can see the shape, and the vibrations of that spinnerbait, as you're burning it super fast, will draw the fish in. But sometimes it's just not quite visible, and pros swear by a bright orange uh, Colorado blade as a, you know, as an add-on. So you'll have your willow in the back and you have a little Colorado in the front. Well, I saw this spoon. It is copper with a bright orange paint on the end. And I was like, well, I like that. And I was like, you know what? This is an awesome pattern. Just the copper with that 
hit of, of orange. I'm going to get some orange paint, some very vibrant like this, orangish red paint. And I picked up a 10 pack from Cabela's of just Colorado's with that same brass color. So the brass color, I will put a little tape down the middle, make a little S curve, and I'll hit it with that red. And that will make an excellent, excellent uh, Colorado on the front side of my spinner baits uh, when the transition comes and when I start throwing my spinner baits uh, out there for some fish. So I thought that would be a great thing. A little bit of DIY. You can always do that. You can get replacement Colorados or Willows, get some, you know, uh, good quality paint, waterproof paint um, and enamel. And... Uh, and just hit it up, spray paint or brush it on however you want, and you can actually redesign your baits uh, to fit what you need. Now, on to the most important part of this video and something that I just felt I should share. Like I say, I'm not the best of swimmers. Currents, in the growing up in the ocean, I've been caught in rip currents before. Um, it's not fun. In fact, uh, I had this thing when I was younger, full disclosure, I hated water in my eyes. I hated it. But I never wore goggles. So I was one of those weird kids. I'd run out, go swimming in the ocean with my friends, and then run back to the bay beach and towel my eyes off. And then go run back out to surf again. Uh, very neurotic. That being said, I wanted to upgrade my PDF. Now, in one of my fish bowls, I got this Stearns PDF belt. It's a automatic inflating PDF. has a little capsule in here that when submerged, it deteriorates. Or you can pull this drawstring, a CO2 cartridge gets, uh, gets activated, and this will split open at this Velcro clasp. Let me get a hold of it. And this pouch in here will balloon up and obviously give you buoyancy, and you will then float to the surface. Problem being, this is a belt. It goes around your waist. So what happens... When it goes around your waist, if you're knocked unconscious, you can actually be floating, bobbing, basically feet up or, or hunched over, porpoising with your head underwater. It's not really intuitive to keep your head above water because it's not located in your upper extremities. It's located at your midsection, so you could go either way. You could be slunged over, still drowning, or, uh, you know, be bobbing up and down like a, like a cork in, uh, in, in the ocean or what have you or in the bay. So, I wanted to upgrade uh, my PDF. I still like the self-inflatings. Uh, I like the fact that you can discharge them yourself, or if you're knocked unconscious by whatever means, it will auto-inflate. There's two types, well, there's one brand of PDF or style of PDF that I do like, which is the self-inflating. One of my favorite brands is Mustang. The Stearns I got for free. I prefer Mustang. Uh, there's many out there. Don't go by Mustang being the best built, or best manufacturer. I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm certainly not here to sell you on this style of PDF. Even the old-fashioned foam PDFs are excellent. Ski vests, I mean, they've gotten a lot thinner and sleeker with the same amount of buoyancy. Uh, but professional, you know, uh, uh, skiers, uh, water skiers, have the thinner vests, which are just as buoyant. They attach to your chest. They keep you above water. Um, but in the realm of the self-inflating PDFs, there's two main styles that you have to be aware of. And that's where I wanted to share this with you. It's very important, and I hope it prevents a grave mistake. So they have the Mustang PDF vests. Again, it's, it's heads and, and tails above the rest. How the hell did I get that all tangled up? Um, it's just two tubes. These are excellent for people who water ski, excellent for people who fish, kayakers, great because you basically just throw this over your shoulders, clasps in the front, like so. All right, so it's on your upper extremities. It's not just around your waist. You can pull this tab and inflate it, or it has in here a sensor that when it's, uh, obviously it's green because it's charged and ready, um, when it's in the water, it will automatically inflate, uh, especially again if you're knocked unconscious, or go into shock if it's in you know you're in icy water. There's two main types. One is called coastal. 
The other one is called hydrostatic. Um, those are the two best ways I can explain. If you're on an ocean liner, you're out at sea, you're over, you know, 20 fathoms of water, you're over, you know, 180 feet, okay? A hydrostatic is a way to go. The hydrostatic PDFs, or PFDs, excuse me, um, they work by how much water pressure is being placed on the sensor. So as you descend in the water to a certain depth, it will kick off, inflate, and bring you back to the surface. Okay. This is the coastal model. If you are uh, fishing lakes, streams, ponds, and you're fishing towards the bank in 6 foot, 8 foot, 10 foot of water, okay, even 20 foot, although don't quote me on this because I don't know exactly what depth the hydrostatics, I'm sure there's different vo volume uh, measurements, but... Say you're in six feet of water, and you trip, you hit your head on the console, you roll off the side gunnel of the boat, and you're in the water. You're in six foot. Say you're a six foot eight guy. You could stand up and be fine. But you're unconscious, so you're face down. In six foot of water, that PDF's not gonna, it, it's not gonna set off if it's a hydrostatic, because you're not deep enough to set that charge off. So a hydrostatic... PDF, you could actually drown in three inches of water. You could be three inches under, your mouth and nose are, are underwater, and you'll drown. Because you're unconscious, you can't roll your head or anything. Okay. This, the coastal version, this works on a different system. Basically, if you remember the game um, Thin Ice, basically you put toilet paper on a little thing and you and you had marbles that were in a tray of water. As you put the marbles on the toilet paper, the weighted metal marbles, or BBs or whatever, were wet. They'd thin out and wet the paper. The paper would eventually fall. And the person, you know, who was last to have their marble on there before the paper gave way and collapsed, they lost. The other person won. All right. Silly game. 90s thing. Similar system. And I do say, if you ever get one of these PDFs, PDFs why do I keep saying PFD, personal flotation device? If you ever get one of these PFDs, with the discharge and, the, and the, um, the CO2. Pick up a recharge kit while you're there, always, because you have to maintain these and periodically check them, discharge them, and replace them. But the system that this runs on, the coastal system, it has this little guy right here. And basically think of this like the toilet paper. So even in six inches of water, a foot of water, if you're laying down and this thing's submerged underwater, this ring will dissolve. When it dissolves in the water, under time, it discharges the CO2 cartridge and inflates the PFD. As opposed to you having to have enough descent into the water to build up the pressure to set off the hydrostatic. Okay? Hydro, water, static, pressure. Okay? Coastal, by the coast, shallow water. If you're just a kayaker, if you're just a lake guy, you know, 10, 15 feet, uh, if you're, you know, if you're just a terrible person, can't swim at all, and you're, you know, in streams that have moving water really quick, where you're trout fishing, and you might trip, fall, hit your head against a rock, go with the coastal version, because no matter what the situation, after a certain amount of time, it's going to inflate and bring you up as opposed to the other one, which may never go off, and then you'll unfortunately drown with a non-discharged PFD. So that's my most invaluable tip uh, for this. It's not something that I think too many people think about. They go to Mustang. Now, I, I will say this. What's sad is the, the hydrostatic one has a really nice padded uh, back uh, plate where this coastal is just webbing. Um, I would actually have preferred having that little strip of material right here against the, the small of my back rather than just this lanyard strap and nylon down the center of my spine. Uh, but unfortunately, that being said, also, hydrostatics are about $100 more. I'm not a cheap person, okay? I'm willing to spend the extra money when it comes to things that are important for safety, important for returning the boat to shore, important for catching quality fish, 
I'll spend the money. I'll buy a better reel or a better rod if I think it's going to help me in performance. Uh, but I'm not going to spend or waste money, especially uh, if it's not going to be helpful to me in the long run. And the reason I bring this up is, again, you're going to look at that Mustang. It's going to be $250, and you're going to think, oh, that's got to be the best one. That's putting your life at risk if you're not putting it in the context of where it's valuable. Again, the hydrostatic is about $200, $250. These run about $100, $150, $120, $150. And you're saving money, but in the long run, this is sadly too expensive, but still way better for you uh, because you can use this in skinny water, you can use this in deep water. Even if you're in the ocean at 150 feet to the bottom or 200 miles to the bottom, um, this is going to go off after a period of time. Once that gets saturated and it, it uh, breaks free, it'll expand and save your life. Where the other one, you have to be over that 150 foot or what have you. Um, so that's me. As always, uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I hope this was a little informative. I hope you stuck it out because I'm probably going to do more things where at the end of the video is very important information. And I hope uh, you get some value out of it. Uh, it'll get rid of the people that watch five minutes and then turn it off. As always, from me to you, peace, and I'll catch you on the next cast. Take care, Hoka.